Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday, October 14th of the 28th week in ordinary time of our liturgical calendar. When I looked at the, uh, the first reading for today, uh, a memory came back for me from 1993. Uh, some of you might remember an incident that happened in Waco, Texas, when a group of followers of a man named David Koresh barricaded themselves in a compound. Um, they were called the Branch Davidians. I'm not sure if you remember this, but a standoff with the FBI uh, happened over two months' time. And by April of 1993, it ended in a terrible tragedy with almost 80 people dying in a fire. In 1993, I was teaching uh, music uh, to grade school, uh, pre-K to eighth grade. And we talked about this because it was all over the news. And the students, this, particularly this one student in eighth grade, asked me about the leader of that group, David Koresh. And this student was confused as to how are we to know who can be trusted. This man, David Koresh, was said to be the leader of the group. He claimed to be a prophet, and yet he also hurt uh, the very people he was leading. And the student was trying to get his mind around the idea of figuring out who really is following the way of Jesus. How do we know if someone is an authentic model after the life of Christ? Uh, and it was a great question then, and I think it's still a really important question now. And I think our first reading can help a little bit in terms of shedding light on that question. So our first reading is a letter of Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Immortal immorality, impurity, promiscuity, hatred, idolatry, rivalry, jealousy, anger, selfishness, drunkenness, and envy. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruits of the Spirit include love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and restraint. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. Now the question that my student asked um, all those years ago is an age-old question. And the letters of Paul in the New Testament, this one in the letter to the Galatians, as well as all the other letters we hear so often at Mass, I think they try to answer that same question. Because Paul, when he was missionary of Christ, apostle of Christ, would travel from town to town preaching about Jesus and converting so many people to become followers of Jesus. Now, he couldn't stay in one town forever. He would leave and start over in a new town, and he would leave leaders back in the town that he had just left to carry on what he had preached. And he would receive letters from them letting him know how things were going. And sometimes problems arose, and he needed to write letters back so that the people in the town could be reminded of what he had taught them. And the thing is this. Paul was not the only preacher going around in those towns. Many people would come and go through the towns and preach. And sometimes what they said wouldn't align with what Paul had preached. So this reading that I just read to you is a response from Paul, trying to help the people come to an understanding. Similar to what my student asked so long ago can be trusted. 
And Paul sets up these two lists and puts them before the people and says, you know you can trust someone if you see the second list, if you see these virtues alive in them. The reading describes what the spirit of Christ looks like in a person who is authentic, authentically trying to be like Christ. Now, no one is perfect, of course, right? And we all struggle and make mistakes. Um, but we learn to trust the people who not only talk a good game, but walk the walk. A person who actually embodies the gifts of the spirit that we heard in the reading. And so the question becomes, does a certain person exhibit and encourage others to be someone of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and restraint. So why do I find this reading helpful and I think is worthwhile for us to reflect on? Because I think, you know, we live in a time of endless voices all around us constantly offering ideas and input and suggestions and opinions. We are bombarded by TV and radio and internet, uh, friends and family, all sorts of chatter. And I think it can feel overwhelming, at least it does for me at times, to try to cut through all that clutter to actually hear the voice of God trying to speak in our hearts. And I think this reading helps us with a focus. You know, it's like noise canceling headphones. It kind of keeps out all the noise and helps us focus on Jesus. What can we trust amidst the craziness of the world that we're living in right now? And so I think this reading helps us to ask ourselves to look at what are the messages or the experiences or the people who are leading us to those virtues? And I'm going to say them again to kind of remind us, the virtues of love and joy and peace, kindness, patience, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and restraint. I think kind of how the world is these days, it's, it's you know, you can kind of, kind of feel lost in, in which way do we go. And, you know, you could pull out a compass and the, the compass helps us to find the path, the right path that we're supposed to be on, which direction we're supposed to be going. And I think these virtues can make, make up a compass for us that even when we feel lost and adrift, um, these virtues can help us get back on track, you know, like a compass, and lead us directly to Christ. These virtues help us um, strive to become the people we hope to be for one another. These virtues help us strive to become the people we hope to be for one another. The kind of people this very wounded world of ours needs so desperately right now. Our compass as followers of Christ. So please know that I continue to pray for you and all those you love and please stay safe and healthy. And until we see one another again, I wish you much peace and much hope.